So it turns out that the conversation about climate change and the Caribbean has gotten considerably louder due to recent extreme events that have occurred in the region. Here are three simple messages which I have extracted from the discussions on climate change and the Caribbean, which you may wish to take away as you begin to engage in this conversation. Takeaway message number one, the Caribbean climate is already changing. So if we look into the historical data, we'll find that there are at least four ways in which we know Caribbean climate is already changing. First, it's getting hotter. The annual mean temperatures in the Caribbean have risen by about one degree since the pre-industrial time, so over the last century, which is about the same rise as has been seen for the globe. This one degree rise, of course, translates into many more hot days and many more hot nights within the region. Or the perception that, boy, summer is starting earlier, it's becoming hotter, and then it is lasting longer. The second way we know our climate seems to be changing is that the rainfall seems to be becoming more variable. If you look on the total rainfall across the Caribbean, it might not seem to be getting wetter or drier in the mean. However, what we have noticed is that the pattern of rainfall is changing. So one year it is very wet, and then another year it is very dry. And add on to that, the nature of how rain falls seems to be changing. So there seems to be an increase in the number of consecutive dry days between rainfall events. And then when it rains, it rarely rains. The third way we know that our Caribbean climate seems to be already changing is when we examine the climate extremes. So if I use Jamaica as an example, we would, have, we would note that from 2000 to present, in those 17 years, Jamaica has experienced at least 12 to 13 extreme rainfall events, many of them associated with tropical storms and hurricanes. However, if we compare to the 20 years preceding 2000, there were only four such events. Climate change may not have everything to do with this increasing extremes, but it certainly is a contributing factor. And it's not just in terms of hurricanes and tropical storms, but also in terms of droughts. In the last seven years, certain the Caribbean region has had at least two major drought events which have last, uh, lasted a year or longer. So we see more extremes. And then the fourth way is, of course, higher sea levels. Our sea levels are rising at about the rate of 3.5 millimeters per year since the early 1990s, which is about the rate the globe has also seen. How we feel it in the Caribbean is through the loss of valuable coastline and especially beaches in our Caribbean region which are important for our tourism industry. Put that all together. It's hotter, our rain is more variable, we're seeing more extremes and we're having higher sea levels. You will note that the Caribbean climate is already changing. Well, you should take notice because what it seems to be doing it's marking the emergence of a new climate regime which is marked by the unfamiliar. It's significant, one, because in the Caribbean, we pattern our way of life around familiar climate. So think about when we reap and when we plant and when we sow and how we treat our agricultural industry. Much of it is based on when we know the rain will fall and when we know the rain will not fall or when it is hottest or coolest. So we actually pattern our life around familiarity in the climate system. Add to that, we have a sensitivity because we live on steep slopes in our island territories or on limited coastal plains. And so if the rain is too heavy, we tend to feel the brunt of it for those living on the steep slopes. Or if we have an extreme event, we get the coastal flooding, which in turn causes problems. And though we prepare for bad climate in the Caribbean, because we're not unfamiliar with bad climate, it seems that the bad climate that we are having of late is more than we have bargained for. And then finally, we want to add the things like, what do we premise our economies on? Agriculture, tourism, fisheries, mining, all climate sensitive. What are the diseases that impact us in the region? Asthma, dengue, Zika, all climate sensitive. And then critical livelihood sectors like water and energy are bound up in climate. The point I think I'm trying to make is this. Our sensitivity to climate is quickly being transformed into a climate vulnerability. And in other words, it's eroding the Caribbean way of life, our standard of life and our quality of life. The second takeaway message would be simply this. 
take account of the fact that Caribbean climate will continue to change. If we do the science of modeling for the Caribbean region, we find the following things. One, if the world does nothing about climate change, we are in for even hotter times. So we have seen one degree rise over the last century. By the end of this century, that we could rise by a further three to four degrees. And with that rise, 98% of the days in the Caribbean will be hot by current standards. That's summer all year round. <laughs> or only 2% of the days may be cool by the end of the century. Not only are we in for hotter times, but it's very likely that we are in for drier conditions. By the end of the century, we'll still have very variable rainfall, but in the mean, we'll also be 30 to 40 percent drier. And the driest times will be during the periods when we expect to get rain. Shorter rainy season, longer, more severe droughts, drier conditions. We'll very likely experience more intense extreme events. It is not that we will likely get more hurricanes or tropical storms, but the ones that we will get will likely be more intense with higher rainfall rates and significantly stronger winds. And then finally, we're in for even higher sea levels than we have already seen. If we use the IPCC report or the scientific studies done since then, we anticipate that by the end of the century we can see anywhere between a half a meter up to two meters sea level rise in the Caribbean region. This has significant implications for land area on the coast which will be lost, people who will be displaced, and all the coastal infrastructure including roads, tourism resorts, ports, airports. Our Caribbean climate will continue to change as we go towards the end of this century and change in ways such that the climate will look a lot different from the climate we currently have. Compared to the present, we have variable rainfall. By the end of the century, will be variable and up to 30 to 40 percent drier. Compared to the present, more intense extremes and compared to the present, at up to two meters sea level rise. The future we will see will be characterized by unprecedented climate change. Unprecedented climate translates to unprecedented impacts. We have already established that the Caribbean is extremely climate sensitive, and so the impacts will be across all areas of our sensitivity. There will be unprecedented health impacts, agricultural impacts, forestry impacts, water resources, coastal areas, biodiversity, and across the spectrum of sensitivity. The unprecedented impacts, I think, we have begun to get a glimpse of already with some of the intense extremes that we have experienced in recent times. But more importantly, the unprecedented impacts stand to derail the Caribbean's efforts to achieve the sustainable development goals. All sustainable development goals which we have signed on to will be threatened under unprecedented climate change. The issue for the Caribbean is that the rate at which the unprecedented is being ushered in may quickly outstrip the rate at which a Caribbean can prepare for it. We therefore have the challenge of how do we con contend with the unfamiliar climate we're experiencing now and yet at the same time prepare for the unprecedented climate that is to come. The final takeaway message is take action, our climate demands change. We can't know what we know now and, and sit back and do nothing. In the Caribbean, there are at least three types of actions that we must take. First one is mitigation. Mitigation is trying to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that we put in the atmosphere. In the Caribbean, mitigation is an important action that we need to take, even though we are among the smaller emitters of greenhouse gases. For the Caribbean, it is a win-win situation. For in the Caribbean, mitigation would involve investments in renewable energies, which will deal with our energy security. In the Caribbean, mitigation would involve looking on how we preserve our forested areas. And certainly in the Caribbean, mitigation would involve looking on how we deal with waste. The world has committed itself to climate change, at least through our lifetime. And so in addition to mitigation, we also have to consider adaptation actions. Adaptation is asking us 
to consider what we need to change in order to live with the climate change that is to come. Adaptation must occur in all areas of Caribbean life that are sensitive to climate. This would include looking on our farming practices, looking on our building practices, looking on how we can harvest water, looking on policies and programs to protect quality and standard of life. And then the third action would be education. We must begin to build a climate smart citizenry in the Caribbean region because it's when you are conscious, convinced and convicted about an issue that you will act on it. Put these three things together, mitigation, adaptation and education, and it means we are on the way to building a climate resilient Caribbean region. Even if we did everything that we must do in the Caribbean region, the Caribbean would still be challenged to maintain its quality and standards of living. It is for this reason that the Caribbean has advocated a position of 1.5 to stay alive. The position suggests that global warming must be no more than 1.5 degrees by the end of the century if in fact regions like the Caribbean and other developing nations are to remain viable places for people to live. To get to 1.5 degrees by the end of the century, however, means that the entire world has to take action and has to take action now because the window of opportunity for mitigation that leads to 1.5 degrees is closing fast. It therefore means that we must act urgently. Caribbean climate is already changing. We must take notice because with it comes the challenge of the unfamiliar. Our climate will continue to change. We must take account of this in our development planning because a changing climate brings a challenge of the unprecedented. And then take action. Our climate demands change. And it demands change now. So there is a challenge of the urgency for action. Thank you very much.